Welcome everyone, it's Andrew here from IDB. No sooner did watchOS 4 hit Apple servers after WWDC did we start downloading it onto our Apple Watch. So here we are with over 50 new features in watchOS 4. Starting off with this new typeset that you'll see on that number pad and throughout the system, it's bolder and heavier than it was in the past. Watch apps now have the ability to be full screen apps so developer can create them without something like that little title bar there at the top. Other than a few hiccups as this is the original beta, watchOS is a lot faster and springier than it was in the past. and App should launch a lot quicker. You can now get location permission requests on the Apple Watch. You can also auto rotate when you're showing someone self something else, which is great for accessibility or if you just want to show them a translation or something. You now have access to core Bluetooth for developers, which is super useful because things like the Dexcom glucose sensor that I personally wear can now connect directly to the Apple Watch instead of having to go through the phone first. So I don't have to have my phone near me and I can get those glucose readings directly to the watch. There's also new background capabilities for developers to take advantage of, which would be maps. There's now actual background location services for navigation. So if you're doing navigating, they can actually keep going in the background similar to how Apple's navigation actually works. So you're not tied to Apple's first party option. There's also background audio recording capabilities that developers can tap into. Fitness apps have a whole bunch of new access that they did not have in the past. So they have real time access to heart rate data, gyroscope, route, map information, accelerometer, and it can enable water lock. There's also NFC access for developers to use the NFC chip in the Apple Watch for different things. There's custom click speeds for accessibility, and Siri has new support for lists as well as for taking notes. There's also a new way to view all your apps on your Apple Watch. Now when you hit the home button, you have an option between a list view or a grid view. Simply 3D touching or force touching, I guess, on the Apple Watch gives you that option of grid view or list view and tap the one you can choose and you get either an alphabetical list or your standard grid view that you can choose the layout. There's also a new dock view that shows everything in a vertical order instead of side to side. You also have two new watch faces that come with it. The notable Siri watch face, which is supposed to be predictive and learns over time. Can show you different things like my photo from last year at this time with Penn and Teller or just Teller from Penn and Teller. Tells you to take a break, some new stories that you might like, when the sunrise will come up and go down, as well as the temperature for the day. It also show any meetings or locations that you have to go to. For me, it also shows any home kit controls that I use at regular times. Then we have a new one called Kaleidoscope, which allows you to take a photo and go through and actually change the design and look of that photo in this cool kaleidoscope lens. And you have an option between the radial as well as the fragmented one, which I guess they would properly call facet. So you have those two options to choose between and several different photos that you can alternate between. So there's a lot of different ones here. You can see what those photos look like on your Apple Watch, but you really don't need to see what they look like when they're regular photos. You need to see what they look like here. And you can use your own photos to make these radial watch faces as well. So you find something cool, you can take a photo of it and make these watch faces. And of course you can scroll through the digital crown to actually change the look of those radial or the facet watch face. This is definitely a really cool one. Both of these are awesome watch faces. I love the Siri predictiveness one, really cool as it learns throughout the day. And the, uh, the kaleidoscope one, just again, just looks really cool and I like what they've done here. The Siri one does have a little Siri icon left hand corner, but it's actually two different complications you can replace. And on Kaleidoscope, you have three complications you can replace. The top left, top right, as well as the long one in the bottom. It is not released yet, but there's also a Toy Story watch face with Buzz, Woody, and Jesse. WatchOS 4 brings a few new complications as well. So first up is the probably the most boring, I guess, which would be a new now playing complication. So before there was a music one which would show a music note you can tap into get to your music but instead we have this new one for now playing and it'll actually animate these bars as music is playing. Pretty neat. The second new complication would be the news complication which is for the new news app that comes in WatchOS 4. Don't worry we're going to look at that in a minute. And then lastly messages got a little bit of a tweak. Instead of just being the little message icon it'll now show you 
how many messages you have on red inside of it. So really cool, it gives you a live update to know if you have any messages that you need to check out. Now this is a beta, so while it should be animated there on the left right now, it was not when we're trying to record this, but I was able to capture it when we switched the long view to see what it actually looks like all across your screen. It'll show you here what song is playing. So question apocalypse as well as animating those little music bars so really cool i like that now playing a uh, complication a whole lot have you ever gotten several notifications at once and they kind of just stack up well in watch os 4 they made that really nice and easy it's definitely hard to capture but here you can see we have that two notification screen and tells you polymail and inbox the apps that they're from and then it'll show you all those complications in a row or all those notifications in a row it's a really nice way to handle multiple notifications coming into your apple watch at the same time so i swipe through all my different screens here just to point out the activity app because we have new notifications for the activity app you'll have several new notifications coming in throughout the day kind of telling you if you're behind or going towards your goal so if you're behind it'll say hey you're a little bit further ahead normally by this point so you should work out a little bit more you also have new ones that are just more frequent kind of egging you on telling you you can definitely get these goals there's new monthly activity challenges so however you're doing each month as well as new celebrations which are like these full screen effects when you hit the really hard to reach goals also while we're here on the home screen we have a new flashlight inside a control center which is really handy you have a solid one a flashing strobe like one and then a red flashing or not flashing uh, one so you have those three different options there which is really neat the flashing is me perfect for like if you're going on a run at night and want to make sure you're visible so let's jump into one of the apps that has the most changes and that's the workout app it has a whole new interface brand new here each of the different apps are now a complete quick start and we have a new high intensity training workout so a new workout type new layout and each one of them is quick start but of course the ones that you use most often will be proactively at the top so siri is kind of thinking about which ones you use and puts them easy to get to right at the top of the list there's also new enhanced swimming workouts so it'll actually track the different sets that you go automatically as you pause and it'll give you the pace for each set and the distance and for each stroke type now while you're in a workout like the cycle here you can swipe to the side and access your music controls which is really quick and easy and if we go to the other side of things you have a new screen here which allows you to actually tap on that plus or i rest i guess it's rather a double tap on that plus and that'll mark a new segment so you can segment out these so if you have like a slow portion then a fast portion you can easily do that or after you're at least in your workout for a minute or so you can tap it one time and it'll allow you to go and add a second thing to your workout so maybe you do a little bit of cardio then you're going to jump into some weights and finish with some high intensity you can easily add as many workouts as you want it'll give you the summary of all those at the end and you no longer have to save your workout so you simply hit done when you're finished or they'll automatically save now for me each of these jumped into open goal because that's what i use most often but you can hit that little three dots to access calories or timed options instead coming soon your apple watch will also communicate with gym equipment and sync things like hr speed and calories lastly it can automatically put your watch into do not disturb mode while you're in a workout that way your yoga class does not get interrupted by text messages other quick notes it'll now automatically tell you when you close your activity ring inside of the activity app it'll tap you on the back of the wrist and music can automatically start once you start a workout now speaking of music let's jump over to the music app which is all new here in watch os 4. The music app will automatically sync any of the music that you listen to most frequently to your Apple Watch, so you don't have to do it manually. But if you are doing it manually, it'll actually sync multiple playlists now. That's going to be really handy, especially if you have something like the AirPods, where you don't need your phone and you've got that second generation Apple Watch with GPS. You can leave that behind and it'll automatically keep the music that you listen to most often here on your watch. So really great new features for listening to music, especially if you're doing it during workouts. It also has this new persistent view, so if you start music on your phone, it'll automatically pop up here on your watch. Personally, I found that a little bit annoying, especially when I'm in my car on the way home listening to audio over CarPlay, and I want to glance at my watch to see my blood sugar or something else. Inside of the Messages application, you now have that person-to-person -person payments over Apple Pay that you can do, and it'll also have that Apple Pay cash card when you do receive payments, and contacts and locations are available in smart replies so when someone says what's your address it'll populate those things in your smart reply messages to send back to them without having to actually type them out 
as we keep moving along, we have a new news app here on your Apple Watch, which we alluded to earlier in the video. It'll show a few different stories for you. It has this really cool photo on the top, as well as some text of the headline and a little bit of the story itself. Now, you can actually read a little bit of that, but you can't read the full story, unfortunately. You can, however, go ahead and save any of those so you can save it for later or just jump on to the next story. It makes it really handy so you can actually see, oh, this is actually something I want to read later. Tap on the Save for Later button and pick it up later on your Apple Watch or <laughs> on your iPhone to finish the full thing. You also have new kind of notifications for them as well. These look really, really nice compared to what they looked like before with that full screen photo and allows you to do those actions like save for later or see another story. The remote app now, you actually have the ability to use Scribble to enter text on something like your Apple TV. The timers app, if you use that frequently, you used to only be able to do a minute or more when setting a timer. Now you have this great new option of going sub minute. So you can tap on custom and do options that are just in seconds instead of in full minutes. So a lot quicker to take smaller amounts for timers. Personally though, I use Siri for this instead of actually going into the app. So while it is a nice feature, it's not something that probably I'm gonna use a whole lot. The mail app on the other hand are a couple really useful things. So first off, we have the new gestures. So you can actually swipe back and forth, which is really handy. And you can swipe to the left, flag and trash. Some of these have been around, but a couple of these, this little animation here, this is I believe new. It looks really nice it kind of fades into the background. You can also create new messages now in mail. So just uh, force touch on the center. You can create a new message, add a contact subject, obviously create the message and send it on its way. The heart rate application now includes this little graph along the top, which is really handy to see how your heart rate fluctuates throughout the day here on the watch without having to jump to the health app over on your iPhone. The camera app was updated slightly. Some of this was available before, some of it's new, but you can now, uh, view different modes and stuff on your uh, on your Apple Watch. There's, if you 3D touch it, some of this was here before again, but you can flip that camera around. That was before, but you have the new live modes you can alternate. There's portrait mode that you can view. You can see more light required. It gives you a little header text letting you know how you need to adjust your camera to actually get in that shot. This is so difficult with my dog just moving around. I'm watching the camera on my Apple Watch, moving my phone, trying to get my dog to sit in a proper position for this, uh, but that's new. We have VO2 Max is now being recorded on the Apple Watch. It is very specific, however. It'll only be recorded from your Apple Watch in certain conditions, like a, a more intense walk or a moderate to intense run outside. It needs to be at least 20 minutes. It gives you a little description here in the health app of what the VO2 Max is if you wanna learn more about it. If you found you've took a great photo of your cat here and you want to make that a watch face, it's easier than ever because in the share sheet, tap the share button, scroll along the bottom, there's now an option to create watch face right from this photo. You have two options. You have the standard photos watch face or this new one at the bottom, which is that kaleidoscope that we looked at. And of course, you can actually go ahead and, and change it. If you do choose one of these watch faces, so we choose the photo watch face here on top, you can choose any of these other options. So including the other complications that you'll be adding to that watch face. Tapping it will save it to your watch and the Apple Watch app. Speaking of the Apple Watch app, if we jump over there, we have a new Apple Watch app app store. So just like the iMessage app store got updated and the app store regular one got updated, the, uh, the Apple Watch app store got a new update as well. New light interface, but again, similar to how we saw with the iMessage app store, right now it's a little bit sparse. There's not a lot of information or categories to make your way through. Then again, it does look really nice. I love the new artwork, new big screens, really nice, really easy to get to the information and all these other reviews along the bottom. Wrapping up this crazy long video on all these great new features are a couple of new ones that we were not able to replicate ourselves, but thanks to some Reddit users we've credited below in the description, we have these new tips for while the Apple Watch is syncing. It'll give you like basics and to pair this iPhone pair. So a new pairing screen on the iPhone itself. So that is it, a crazy number, over 50 new features for Apple Watch in WatchOS 4. Let us know what you think of all of these and what you're hoping to see next year down below in the comments. Please subscribe, and until next time, it's Andrew for IDB.